Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I'm going to do a highlight on one of my absolute favorite InDesign scripts. I use this script almost every single day in my regular workflow. The script is called Trista DPI InDesign to Photoshop. This script accomplishes a couple of different things. This book will be published via ingramspark.com. IngramSpark has a couple of requirements for the images specifically in the books when they go through print. Otherwise, you could encounter errors when you're uploading your book. So let's have a look over here at our links panel. Currently, you can see that all of my links, as we scroll through, have an actual PPI of 300. This means that I opened up the file in Photoshop and I told that file to have a screen resolution of 300 pixels per inch. However, you'll notice in my effective PPI column, the numbers are all over the place. Why is this? The reason this happens is because, take for example this moose. This moose is only 20% the size that he is in Photoshop. I know this by looking up here at my width and height, my scale X and scale Y. I have selected that moose, and when we look up here, it says 20%. If I increase the moose to 100%, and he's now flown out of his frame, and we reset this to fit frame to content, now we have the moose at actual size. This is without any type of stretching or shrinking on the moose. Now if we look back at my panel here at the top of the screen, now I have both an actual and effective PPI of 300. This is what I consider true 300, tr true 300 resolution. And that is what Ingram Spark is looking for. In addition, Ingram Spark is also looking for a true 300 and a CMYK color mode. For some reason, Ingram Spark does not particularly like grayscale. It obviously doesn't like RGB because that is a screen color. Um, and I would have expected it to not have an issue with grayscale, but it doesn't like that either. It wants it to be a CMYK color mode, even if it's a black and white image, that's fine. It still wants the color mode to be CMYK. So we have a lot of stuff to fix here. Almost every single one of these images has the incorrect effective PPI, and a lot of them have an incorrect color mode as well. So if I was to do this by hand, I would have to, let me put my moose back to where he was by clicking Control Z. If I were to do this, I would have to measure my tech, my uh, image frame here. I would have to look up here at the top and see that it is 1.53 inches wide. I would open this in Photoshop. I would shrink it down to 1.53 inches wide. And then I would essentially get the correct effective and actual PPI, making sure that they match. However, there is a wonderful, lovely little script that can do this completely automatically for us. Let me open my scripts panel. If you are not sure where your scripts panel is, you can find it by navigating to Window, Utilities, and y'all can't see that, Utilities, and then Scripts right here. In my scripts panel, I'm going to navigate to my script, which is right here, Trista DPI. If you don't know anything about scripts, don't worry. They're not scary, no coding required. It's essentially adding another function to InDesign that it didn't originally have. All you need to do is copy and paste it into your scripts folder. If you're not sure how to do that, I will link a video here. Let's go ahead and launch our script. I'm gonna double click on it, and it's going to ask me to save that document before proceeding. It wants me to update the links before continuing. This script is pretty smart. It has a lot of fail safes on it. As you can see, it's making me save the file. It's making me make sure that there are no broken links. So here's what it looks like when we begin. On this screen, 
is where we should see a list of all of the linked images in the folder. However, if we look at our document at the bottom of the screen, we can see that it has a red dot. This means there's some kind of issue going on with the file and the script cannot proceed. I would have a guess that we probably have a broken link. So let's go back and check. Yep, it looks like fern large.tiff has been modified. I'm gonna double click on that to relink it. And we look like we're in good shape now. So let's relaunch the script. So currently, if we look at our script, we can see the only image showing is moose.tiff. That's because that's the image that I currently have selected in my document. However, I can tell the script to increase its scope by including everything in the active document. The other thing this script does very well is that it can run uh, through an entire book document or all open documents, which is very useful as well. I only have one document open at the moment, so this option is currently grayed out. One option that this script has is it will process off bleed images. This means images that are off on the edges of your canvas, but not necessarily on the page. Um, I do not want to process those images, so I will not click this box. A couple things to note. Uh, by default, the pre-press workflow is what I use for my print projects. Now, the script also has a digital workflow and one more option for unembed images, which I will do another video for at some point. But we're going to leave things at pre-press workflow. I don't have any vectors or bitmaps in the, my current file, so we're going to ignore these options. And I do not want to leave my images open in Photoshop after we are done. I already have everything in this document changed to a TIFF. TIFF is probably your best option when it comes to print. Um, so this is what we generally are using for our photographs and illustrations. One wonderful, wonderful feature of this script is to change the format of JPEGs and PNGs. You can ask it to change them into a PSD or a TIFF file, or to do either or, because PSDs tend to do better with transparencies. I, however, for this project in particular, want to maintain my TIFFs. So I'm going to tell it to save my TIFFs as TIFFs. And I'm going to tell it to change the format of all my files as a TIFF, which they already are. Um, one thing you can do is you can tell the script to basically replace or delete the original files and then replace with the new ones. If you would like to save your old files, do not click this. Make sure this is unclicked. Here's where I have done some modifications of my own. I want to make sure that my images are true 300. So what I've done is I've selected both color and grayscale images. And I want for my images to become a true 300 size. And I want there to be no variance. Now this number here um, gives a threshold, basically. This is, this is a threshold. So if I was okay with my images, climbing to say 330 PPI, then I could increase this number to 30 and it would give a threshold limit of 330 in addition to 300. However, I do not want to do that, so I'm gonna leave this number at zero. All right, um, last thing, if you want to pick and choose which images you want to, you can do so. I want to use all of them, however, so I will use Control A to select them all. To launch the script, I am going to simply click Enter on my keyboard. Now, watch what happens. If Photoshop is not already open on your computer, this script will go ahead and launch it. Currently, the script is running through all of my files and loading them into the memory for Photoshop to open. If you don't already have Photoshop opened, this script will go ahead and launch it for you. So what you didn't see on my end was that Photoshop was opened. The script ran through each image in Photoshop. Somehow it links back with InDesign and checks what the width of that image is, opens it in Photoshop, drops that width, or ups that width to that correct size. And then when we come back and look at our links panel here, you can see that both the effective and the actual PPI match. Next, we are going to use a secondary script, which I have modified 
Um, I will also leave the link for this script in the description. This script will modify our color modes automatically via sending the images to Photoshop yet again. Let's find this one. So I have named this script convert RGB and grayscale TIFFs into CMYK. Nothing flashy much to watch for this one, but if you'll note the grayscale images in my links panel up here, when I double click the script, it's going to be pretty quick. It's going to launch these images over to Photoshop and then bring them back um, as CMYK. As we're sitting here waiting, I have had issues in the past Sometimes the Trista DPI script will be touchy about file names if there are illegal characters, um, say like a period or a percentage sign or a plus mark in the name of the file. Occasionally it will fail to run that file. Recently it seems to have been working regardless. Uh, but if you are having issues with some of your images not running through, double check that. Make sure that there is no illegal characters in your file name. Now, as you can see in my links panel here, um, these have all updated to CMYK, except for these two on the end, which haven't updated yet because um, I'm still trying to download those from Dropbox and my internet is horrible today. So I'm not going to worry waiting around for those two, but I promise you if I let them download, they would update. Okay, everybody, if you have questions or comments, leave them below. Go ahead, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Look at how many of you are not subscribed. Why are you not subscribed? Just do it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. All right, everybody. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.